We are here at the YouTube space in New York. I'm Scott Goldman, the executive director of the Grammy Museum, and I am with Song of the Year nominee, Justin Tranter. That just sounds so weird to even hear that. Well, tell, tell me why, because, <laughs> because I'm interested in knowing, you know, how well, does that I feel? Was, I was in like a glam punk band for so long, so never even thought we'd get anywhere close to the Grammys. And then now as a pop songwriter, you know, for songwriters, there's pretty much only one category we can get nominated in, mm -hmm. and it's such a dramatic, big, exciting category. So I kind of like, not in a negative way, but I kind of was like, that's probably just never gonna happen. Cause it's like only five songs a year. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing like, pretty much like, I write all, like a little alternative pop music, mm -hmm. but it's still pop music. Normally mm -hmm. those songs are like really like serious, you know. So I just never thought it was going to happen. And yeah. so now that it's happened, it just doesn't feel real yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and um, you know, the, when, when you look at the others who are nominated. Like, how, how, is, how is this life? Yeah. How? yeah. <laughs> tell me about, tell me about where, where were you when you got the call? I was just at home in bed really fucking early. <laughs> um, I'm on the board of GLAAD, which yes. is uh, uh -huh. you know, an LGBTQ media advocacy organization. And um, they have to be very up to date. And they're based in New York, so mm -hmm. they're up a lot earlier. And they have to be like super duper up to date on all these nominations because they need to put out a statement about LGBTQ mm -hmm. inclusivity mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So for the, this, for the Grammys and for the Golden Globes, when I woke up, the first text was from the CEO of GLAAD being like, congratulations, blah, blah, So that's also pretty cool because like I worship her and she's like yeah. a huge activist that saves a lot of lives. And so like to have her text me and be like, yo, <laughs> Grammy, you're just like, what? <laughs> How did I get here? <laughs> Crazy. Um, um, so I, I want to talk about the song and I want to talk about writing the song. And as, as I mentioned to you, I, you know, I had, the, I had the chance to talk to Julia yeah. About, uh, you know, about the song. And and she she refers to, because she too is a songwriter. Um, of course, you know, amazing songwriter. Amazing, amazing yeah. songwriter. And she refers to, to the process, mm -hmm. at least for her, as musical therapy. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it strikes me, if you listen to the song, if you listen to Issues, um, there are some issues we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, so tell me about the discussions that, that you had with her as yeah. you started to write the song. So, you know, obviously me and Julia have written an insane amount of songs together. So at that point when we wrote Issues, um, which I think at this point was like two years ago now mm -hmm. that we actually wrote it. Obviously it came out much later than that, but um, when we were already really close, you know, cause a lot of times as a pop songwriter, you walk into these sessions and you maybe have never met the person or you've only met them a couple times. And like, so to write something as like raw and honest and like bare, like your soul is issues, you kind of really need to know somebody, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, and so luckily at that point, me and Julia are already best friends. Um, and our, even when she, you know, cause we didn't, when we wrote that song, she wasn't planning on being an artist yet, on being a singer. Mm -hmm. We were just writing it, like we would go in every day and write songs for other people. Um, but even when we were writing songs for other people, I always wrote with Julia as like, these are, these are her, her stories. Like she's the artist. I am, I am the co-writer who is here to help the artist facilitate their vision and have a sounding board and have an elevator and all those other things. So, um, that's how we were writing the song. Like mm -hmm. this is her story. This crazy thing had just happened with her and her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend, whatever you want to call it. And I'm there to like kind of help field it. And it's hard, really hard to put into words because it happens so fucking quick, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, that's how she always wrote. She wrote like these were her songs, even though she wasn't singing them yet. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, you know, I talked to her about this and, yeah. and I'd be interested to get your take on this, that, you know, as, as a songwriter, especially a songwriter who is, who is really um, writing as openly and as honestly and from this very, very vulnerable place. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for the longest time for her, it was like, well, I can do this and I can give, I can give the words to others to sing yeah. and I don't have to bear that burden. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you, you know, you, you as a songwriter, do, do you have that same sense that, that, that y you could be bearing a little of your soul and your vulnerability, but somebody else can go sing it? Yeah. I, it's, it, it's really interesting. I, I always talk about, for me, it's like I had in my 
band for so long, I got to write and sing and say and wear and do exactly what I wanted for 10 years. And it was all pretty fucking extreme. You know, it's really over the top and really, really. So I had all of that. So that once I got into pop songwriting, I was kind of just ready to help other people tell their stories. I was mm. ready to help other people execute their vision. Um, and so for the most part, none of these hits that I have, they're not my story. Mm. I find ways to relate to them so that I can be more honest. I find ways to be like, oh, well, that kind of happened to me 10 years ago. Because also most people I write with are a lot younger than I am. Mm. So I'm like, mm. yeah. oh yeah, I remember when I <laughs> thought like a relationship was like the end of the world, you know? <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm just, relationship sounds insane. You're all crazy. Why do you do that to yourself? But, um, <laughs> but. We could have a whole nother discussion yeah, about that. Other, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> So it's, it's, it's different for me because these aren't my stories and I take such pride in that. Mm. And I feel like, um, I think some songwriters are, are afraid to say that because it makes it like less real or less like, I don't know what, it, but to me I'm, it makes it, that's what I bring to the table. I'm here to, to facilitate and structure and grow and make things a little more fabulous and yeah. a little more urgent. Um, so for me, there oh, is... I love that. Fabulous and urgent. Urge, oh, those urgent. are my two favorite things in music. Urgent. Fabulous how do, how do and urgent. You do, how, do you, how do you make it more urgent? You have to get to the truth. So my, I, 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 this, I have the best job in the world, right? I go into the rooms with people that I, for the most part, don't know. Especially now that Julia is off being a superstar. Yes. You know, I'm like speed dating with different <laughs> artists and different writers every day. Um, and it's it's really interesting. It's really awesome. And it's, it's kind of like... Um, I got to work with Leon Bridges recently, which oh my is gosh. amazing. Love that guy. And I'm not spilling any tea. He already told people this isn't like brand new news. Right, right. So, um, and I, I was just like, I just met him and I was just like, so are you in love? And the whole room kind of went like, that's it. That's really, bold. That's a bold, like, nice to meet you. Are you in love? You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, I have to get to the truth. Like, I have to get something that we can, that feels urgent, that feels mm. important, that feels honest. Um, in, the, in the moment. In the moment. Well, yeah. and it's like, I want to write the best song possible. And mm. I know this is awkward because I just met you, but I need to know, are you in love? Like, how's your mom? Like, <laughs> do you hate yourself? You yeah. know, like these are all... But was that, I mean, I, I, and I'm wondering, is that an acquired skill? Is that something that, you know, like the first couple times you walked into a co-write, were you that way? Yeah, I, I think I was lucky by the time I got there, you know, because I fell into pop writing almost on accident. I was in the band and the, we were on Epic and they refused to release our album. And we had a publishing deal, like an artist band publishing deal. And um, this new, this woman named Katie Vinton came into Warner Chapel and she listened to the new album that we made and she's like, well, this is amazing, but I can't help you. Like, I don't work at Epic, I work at Warner Chapel. Like, I, like <laughs> but I could put you in sessions to write for other people if you want. Like, I think your songs are amazing. Do you want to try that? Um, and that changed my whole life. So it wasn't ever like, okay, I got to build this skill now as a pop songwriter. It was just like, okay, do what he, you do. Here I am. And luckily, as you can see, I like to talk. <laughs> and so like, we like that about you. So it's like you just go in and you talk. And I think that you know, also being, you know, I think that queer people are like the ultimate. Not the ultimate underdogs, but we definitely have an underdog perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that that underdog perspective really kind of helps me cut to the core of things. Mm. And I think, you know, my fabulosity can help me get away with saying some pretty bold shit to a person I just met that other people can't. Right. Maybe. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if that answered your question. No, no, it, at it, all, no, no, no. It, 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 there it, you go. No, it, 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 <laughs> all of it is, it's of a piece. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's all of a piece. But so I'm interested, uh, you know, you talked about being, being in your band, but when you, were when you were younger, what what music were you listening to growing up? Was there an artist or a band yeah. that you heard that you said, oh, I have that's, to write songs. I, that's what I need to do? There was a couple moments, like super duper young like five, four or five years old was the musical Annie. Uh -huh. I was convinced I was Annie. <laughs> um, so that was first. And then The Little Mermaid. You mm -hmm. know, these sure. aren't the most rock and roll answers, but it's the <laughs> no, truth. It's the truth. We're getting to the truth so, here. Well, you were at the you were at the Imagine Dragons program when yeah. Ben Mc, or Ben or one of one of the guys yeah. mentioned Kenny G. Yeah. Kenny I mean, G. My answers are definitely better than that. No, <laughs> actually, Kenny G's a genius, and people give him way too much shit. But um, I, I want Kenny G's bank account. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I picked up the wrong instrument. Anyway, so 
And then though, it was like, there was that whole 90s era of female singer songwriters. So whether mm. it was Ani DeFranco, Tori Amos, Paula Cole, Courtney Love, who I think is one of the most underrated songwriters, mm -hmm. Gwen Stefani, again, super underrated songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, that whole 90s era of women that all came at once, Alanis Morissette, right. those, it was those women and their story and their, their strength, but still coming from this feminine point of view, like that exploded my whole mind. Well, you know, and, and, and now that you're mentioning them and thinking about, thinking about their music and talking earlier about being vulnerable and being honest and open, that was the hallmark that was of it. the songs that they were writing. Well, and there was so much urgency to what they're mm. doing. It was mm. honest and vulnerable, but you know, whether it was Courtney or Alanis or Ani DeFranco or Tori Amos, there was this like, or Fiona Apple, yeah, like, there was sure. this like fucking coming at you with mm. like, you know, lyrical daggers, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? And like, yeah. that was like, oh, I have, I have to write songs. Yeah. Like this is, okay, phew, I figured <laughs> it out. I'm gonna write songs. Huh. I mean, it took me like, you know, 20 years to make money off yeah. of it, but I <laughs> fucking got there. Okay. Um, so it, d d just back to, to Julia for a minute, because you wrote, you wrote issues. She had yet to make the decision for herself yeah. that she would be the artist. And, and in talking to her, there was a whole internal sort right. of dialogue about kind of wrapping her head around that idea. Did you, were you in any way encouraging of her to do that? It was, it's a, it was an interesting balancing act of, not a balancing act like I'm gonna, I need to figure this out. It was like, uh, as her friend, the thought of being an artist really stressed her out. And everybody, every, you know, every time we'd go into a label meeting, the executive was like, let's just put these songs out with your voice. And everyone was kind of pressuring her. So take the co-writer out of the equation as her friend, mm. very close friend. Yeah. I mean, we spent yeah. six days a week together for three years yeah. before she started touring. Like, I was like, whatever you want. Like, do it or don't do it. Your mm -hmm. voice is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I think you telling these stories from you would have maybe even more of an impact sometimes, mm. you know? Especially selling issues, like, you sh that should be yours. I mean, but that was all her idea. But. So it was, a, it was an interesting, like, well, I think you should do yeah. it, but also as your friend, if it freaks you out, don't fucking do it. Right, like, yeah. but there was a moment that she talks about of, of when she was maybe gonna, they were gonna be featured on a song that mm. we had written for somebody, and they decided not to keep her, her part on, and that really fucked with her. <laughs> and we were in a session writing for somebody else, and that really kind of crushed her, and I was like, she was like in the bathroom crying, and again, she's told this story, I'm not spilling tea that I'm not supposed yeah. to. Um, and I knock on the door and I was like, well, one, are you okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> should I yeah. call somebody? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. But two, like, if them taking your voice off of this is affecting you that much, maybe it's time to do that it. you start doing this. Mm. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of like, being able to really kind of talk about it and figure it out. Yeah. And, I think it's just amazing, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think that there is something so beautiful about being the songwriter behind the scenes, but there's something so special, especially I think for young people to hear her actually sing these songs. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, literally when you see her do that song, <sighs> It's, it, like, it's, it's like written on her body. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I mean it's it just, literally. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah well, <laughs> um, but but you just you you, you yeah. get that sense. And here's the other thing about the song. And I talked to her about this, and I want to get your your um, kind of view on it. As a song, to me, it completely subverts sort of the pop construction. Yeah, you're waiting for the big chorus, you're waiting for the drop, you're waiting for all these things that never happen, yeah. that never come, and it completely draws you in. Yeah, well what's interesting is that it's definitely not chasing any pop trends at all, it's very classic and blah, 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 and it doesn't feel like it hits any of the normal pop points, but as like me, I, you know, I went to Berkeley College of Music and like a total songwriter geek, structurally it actually is, pretty perfect. <laughs> it's, I mean, I know that's weird to say, well, well, no, well, but talk, but talk like, about it. But like phrasing wise, like there's things that you look at, right? Like you kind of want the different, um, the verse and the pre-chorus and the chorus, you want melodically, it doesn't all, these are just rules that are made to be broken, yeah. but you want those phrases to start in different places. So like, you don't judge, it's right on the one, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I got issues is mm -hmm. before the one. So mm -hmm. it's like when you, the chorus comes, 
she's singing earlier than she was singing before. Melodically, we do grow. So it's the verse is here, the pre is here, the chorus is there. Now, mind you, when you're writing, these aren't really things you're thinking about unless something doesn't feel right. And, 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 and then, and you're then like, you apply the Oh, mechanical. let's look at the math and see what's yeah. not working. Yeah. In, in this case, in this song, it's just like spilled out. You know, mm -hmm. like it just spilled out of Julia's magical, magical face. And I was just lucky enough to get to like figure out how to zhuzh it, you know, and, and, and elevate it and, and do what I yeah. could do. But yeah. by the um, way, that's a, that's, a, that's a technical songwriting term. Zhuzh. zhuzh. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very yeah. technical. Yeah. 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 And for everything fashion, <laughs> makeup, <laughs> songs. Um, so it's one of those things where it doesn't, right? It doesn't have that big explosion track wise. It doesn't mm -hmm. do this, it doesn't do that. But melodically, it actually like, it hits all the things yeah. you want to hit. Yeah. Um, uh, and how often does it happen that these things sort of come together in that way? Because I've, I've talked to many songwriters who, who all, always seem to say, the best songs I've ever written have happened in the shortest amount of time. I, I mean, for me, the majority, yes. It's not mm. always the best yeah. ones, but I feel like, well, I can say this, like the, the best songs, like the heart of it comes out really fucking fast. Mm. It pours out. And then sometimes you go back and you tweak. Like when I work with Matt Mann and Robin, mm -hmm. um, who I did Cake by the Ocean with, I did mm -hmm. Believer with them, Imagine mm -hmm. Dragons. Um, in those moments, we, you still need like the main guts to pour out mm -hmm. and capture that quick, but they, they, they'll massage longer than most of my collaborators and it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, it's, I'll, say. yeah, yeah. So it's, I'll say. It's hard to say, but I think, yeah, you have to get, especially if you're trying to write something honest and mm. it's, you have to get that, that rush pretty quick. Is it, is it different, you, you mentioned Matt Man and Robin. Mm -hmm. um, is it different uh, co-writing and working with an artist as opposed to these producer dudes who are, <laughs> yeah. you know, top level and they've written, you know, hits for all, or produced hits for all manner of people. Yeah. Does it change kind of who you are as a songwriter? It, it does. Well, you have to, as the songwriter, it's not about me. Mm. Um, and so if it's not about me, I have to figure out what I can do to best enhance, as in writing we always call it in the room, like mm. you're in the room and get in bigger rooms and better rooms and <laughs> rooms, which we should come up with a much more glamorous I have a nice room word. at the hotel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we need a much more glamorous <laughs> word than room. But it's like, you know, it's not about me. So my job is to get in there and figure out how I can serve the room the best. Um, and so it's not just is it different with artists versus producers or, or artists versus just straight up songwriters or it's kind of just it's case by case by case by case, you know? Um, I think, you know, Julia and Dan Reynolds write very similarly where it's very personal mm -hmm. and it's very like, this is their fucking life. And like, and so that one you have to realize like, okay, I need to just figure out how to let them tell their story. This isn't for me to interject. Like I need to just do what's best and like, you know what I mean? So it's different. Yeah. And yeah. then you yeah. get into some rooms and it's like, it's more my personality and I lead the way, you know, so it's just like every day, sure. is, every day is fucking different. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, Song of the Year nominee, is this, is this, it, it, is this changing you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope I'm a completely different person. Um, no, but, but in the sense, in the sense that more people calling you up, more places to be, more distractions. I mean, you know, success brings its own, not that you, yeah. you've been successful already, but, but this level brings its own sort of set of challenges. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the, the main challenges that success brings is just pressure that people put on themselves. Mm. Um, and I think that, and I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm completely cured of that phenomenon. Of course, I put pressure on myself and I want to do better and I want to do more and I want to do more important things and elevate more marginalized people to tell their stories mm. and pay my privilege forward and all that stuff. But um, to me, I view those as like aspirations, not really pressure. Um, and also, you know, my band did really cool shit and we were amazing and we had a great fan base, but in the industry, it was viewed as like a failure like four different times, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. So it's like for me, any of this, I can't believe any of it's happening. It's all like, do you know, it's yeah. all a yeah. dream come true yeah. and it's all like I never thought, 
I would get here and, you know, the lack of LGBTQ representation mm-hmm. in the music business and especially on the business side, like I put songwriters on the business, like the behind the scenes sure. side, I should say. Sure. There's almost, there's fucking none of us. Mm-hmm. So like for me to, you know, be so out and proud and live my truth and get fucking nominated for a Grammy and a Golden Globe and all that shit, it's like... I can go home. Like I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm gonna start an animal sanctuary. Like screw it. No, but I, I mean, I love what you. Uh, I love what you're saying about you know elevating those who m- might not have the platform. Yeah. And giving them the platform or helping them get. Yeah. You know, to a to a to a different place. Yeah. I was saying to Kay Flay last night. Me and my publisher Katie were hanging out with Kay Flay last night, and she's just brilliant, brilliant human being, and. We were talking about, I was saying, so I met this amazing artist named Shia Diamond, and Mm. she's a trans woman of color, and she has this amazing life story, well, a crazy life story, and um, if I would have met her five years ago, I would have been like, oh, she's awesome, I'm going to write a song about her. And then I was like, but now, like, no, I should just give her the platform to write her own songs and Mm. tell her own story. Mm. Um, And so, like, that's the pressure I want to put on myself. Like, no, don't just... Yeah. Don't tell her story. Let her tell yeah. her story. Well, and, and I was just talking to another Song of the Year nominee, Erica Ender. Oh, genius. And, and fantastic. And she, too, was talking about, it's, it's not about me. It's not about her. Yeah. It's about who I'm working with. Yeah. It's about others. Yeah. No, and it's, I, I, I love the story of, like, working with Joe Jonas, right, when we mm. wrote Cake by the Ocean. And that song is so fun and goofy and sexy and over the top and... But that was like the honesty that I got out of him. You know, we worked for a couple days and we were writing a little more serious stuff and this and that. But hanging out with him, he's like really funny and he's really hot. You know, <laughs> so I was like, well, we should just. This is good. We should just. We should just do that. <laughs> and like, even though it's a fun, goofy song, to me, I'm so proud of it because it worked. Because that, yeah. I got, I figured out how to make that's, that's him his truth. him. That's, yeah. He's fucking the shit. Yeah. So we should do that, you know? Yeah. And like, so even when it's fun, our job is to just help people tell the truth, even mm. if that truth is yeah. cake by the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, who do you want to work with? That's a good question. Beyonce, Stevie Nicks, mm. Ani DeFranco. Cardi B. Uh, is, there, is, there, is, there, is there a through line there? What, what, tie, what ties those artists together? Women, For you. Uh, women, women who okay. tell awesome stories. Yeah, yeah I don't really yeah. care what men have to say. No offense. Mm. No. <laughs> I won't take it personally. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just women who have fucking awesome stories to tell mm. and have done great things. And um, that's just what made me want to make music in the first place. Yeah. And that's what makes me want to keep making music. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to make, you know, a musical. I want to do a bunch of stuff. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, all I can say is you're awesome. Thank you. Um, you're we're, awesome. We're, we're so glad that you took the time. My honor. The best of luck on Sunday. Thank you. To you and Julia. Thank you. Um, thanks, Justin. Thank really you appreciate it. What's up, y'all? This is B.O.B. This is g Easy. I'm Mo. This is Julia Michaels. This is Logic. Make sure you subscribe to the Recording Academy channel. Flex.